व्यक्ति श्री शालीन काबरा एमडी जल जीवन जे एन के श्री जी एन इटू चीफ इंजीनियर जय शक्ति कश्मीर श्री संजीव मल्होत्रा फ्रेंड्स ऑफ द मीडिया ऑन बी ऑफ द डी आई आई इन्वाइट ऑल आई वेलकम ऑल ऑफ यू है टू द प्रेस ब्रीफिंग टूडे दी फॉर्मैट ऑफ द प्रेस ब्रीफिंग विल बी ओपनिंग रिमार्क्स बाई दी एडिशनल चीफ सेक्रेटरी फॉलोड बाई अ ब्रीफ इंट्रोडक्शन सर थैंक यू थैंक्स थैंक यू दिस is a briefing which has been organized with regard to implementation of jal jeevan mission in jnk uh, there have been a lot of uh, news with regard to jal jeevan mission in the papers for some time being now and in particular it has been mentioned that uh, an amount of 13000 crore rupees involved while i'll go into details of the implementation of jjm in jnk i would like to uh, right in the beginning point out that while 13000 crore is being alleged the actual expenditure which has taken place under the mission is 3000 crores 313088 3100 eight, crores approximately to be precise and out of this about 2500 crore has been spent in the last one year since august 2022 so it is for you uh, to judge yourself what would be the level of truth in such kind of allegations more importantly since 2019 there has been a sea change in the manner in which the execution of works has been taking place in jnk there is absolutely strict adherence to the gfr provisions and the gfr provisions require that there has to be absolutely transparent process of bidding and allotments and this is being followed by the jal shakti department most of you would be aware that before these directions departmental execution was the norm in the phd department but since 2019 and particularly coming to the jal jeevan mission i would like to state specifically that not even a single allotment of works or procurement of any of the pipe material has been done without tendering more importantly it is not tendering by simply publishing it in the newspapers but e tendering and this e tendering has been done through the public portal the enits are always uploaded on the nic portal and every allotment has been made after following the due process of e tendering it's is february 19 when the e tendering was directed to be implemented all across the ut and jaljeevan mission has also followed the same i would also like to inform all of you that every allotment order which has been made and there are about 6600 order so every allotment order is on the website of the chief engineers the respective chief engineers and for the ease of the public to access these allotment orders they have been arranged district wise within the district the division for example some districts do have more than one division and within the division as per the water supply scheme because in some cases a water supply scheme feeds more than one village all these allotments are there on the website for everybody to see i would like to inform you before going into details of the progress of jjm that during the bhrashtachar mukt sapta the week which was organized and also participated by the jal shakti department from 4th to 10th we specifically published advertisements inviting people to tell us any kind of complaints related to any kind of malfeasance or any other malfeasance which is there any allotments which have might have been done and i am happy to inform you that not even a single complaint has come where anybody has alleged that any allotment has been done in a manner which is not transparent yes there are complaints with regard to slower execution there could be complaints with regard to not water not being provided and all these things let me tell you are going to get addressed in due course of time as and when the schemes get complete all these areas will get sufficient water 
Now I'd like to come to specifically with regard to Jaljeevan Mission some of the points, and then of course uh, I would invite you uh, invite any uh, questions from anybody. The first point is that Jaljeevan Mission in JNK also and we say is the same. 55 liters per day LPCD water at the water quality standards of BIS 10,500. The important part is not merely making the water available, that quantity, but also the quality of water. So this is where the challenge lies. And we are covering the entire population of 18.67 lakh rural households. At the, at the time of the start of the mission, we were covering only 31% of the population. And since 8, 2019, when the mission started, today only 31% is left. And out of this, 2 lakh households have been functional, household tap connections have been added since the start of the current year. And therefore, today we are figuring at 69% of the total numbers of 18.67. Can you just take out the... I'll be circulating these sheets which bring out very clearly what is the status of allotment and what is the expenditure also which has taken place. We intend to, during the mission period, and in fact earlier to that, hopefully by December this, end, this year, ensure that we meet the uh, requirements of the Jaljivan mission. There are about 3,000 odd schemes and there are 6,600 components. And these components include a variety of things. It could be bore wells, tube wells, etc., overhead tanks and everything. Today, the number of works allotted is 97% critical components. And when we say critical, it means either some expertise needed or some, some of the other reason is there why it is critical to the functioning of the water supply scheme. Now, at this moment, it is 97%. In June 2022, the period at which certain allegations have been made, at that point of time, this number was only 14%. Today it is 97%. I would also like to tell you that while the number of works that has started was 6%, today it is 73%. And this is not; these are not the figures which have been given or sim simply been belted out by, on the basis of some calculations, some anywhere. Each and every one of these figures are in the public domain by way of actual execution being done. Actual execution, the execution of works on ground, both physical and financial being reported on the public portals of the Ministry of Jal Shakti in the IMIS portal. And uh, uh, we had made the arrangements for, if possible, to show you how IMIS portal is accessed. On the IMIS portal, the reporting is done by actually uploading each and every household that gets connected. And that household needs to be Aadhaar linked. The Aadhaar authentication takes place. That is the only proof which is accepted by the ministry that that household might have been connected. Part one. Number two, even after we report, it is the village community, the Pani Samiti, they all meet and take a decision whether they would like to agree to the department's request that the particular village may be certified as Har Gar Jal certification. So therefore, this is not a process where the government is on its own reporting anything. It's a process with com where community is involved and it is only when the community completely agrees and it states that yes, indeed, this requirement has been met, only after that this scheme is com considered complete. So all those figures that I'll share with you regarding allotments and completion all these are in the public domain. Similarly, whatever funds are allotted by the UT as part of the 10% share which is to be provided in this scheme, it's a centrally sponsored scheme, and whatever funds are to be allotted by the UT, released to us, is spent, is there on the Jan Bhagidari portal. I'll repeat, it is there on the Jan Bhagidari portal. The expenditure figures are clearly there. So physical figures in terms of the households connected are very specifically mentioned household wise name of the household per, the person is there on the IMIS portal while any kind of expenditure 
either send comment share or the ut share is also reported in public domain in addition the water quality monitoring is done by the women mostly women who have been trained in all the villages to check the water quality through ftks the kits and uploading of the results is not done by the department it is again done by them directly on the portal this is again something which is in the public domain therefore the possibility of any kind of data inaccuracies is not there the infrastructure which is there being built is going to meet the requirements of next 30 years it's not that it's going to be another 5 years or 10 years we're talking of 30 years of requirement and because there's a huge requirement which is there this huge amount of work is involved therefore there is also a requirement of substantial purchases of pipe material initially it was thought that the composite tenders would be the method by which we would like to execute and composite tender requires that a particular scheme in its entirety is advertised and allotted to the person who comes the lowest but we, it was noticed that the bidding was very the response was very poor and we understand that it is because of the relatively lower capacities of the contractors in jnk it is after due consideration over a period of 1 1 and 1/2 years that the method of implementation as per the guidelines of the jjm was changed to wherever requirement was there to component wise tendering and that has led to the progress that i have just now stated from 14% to 97% in respect of critical components in a period of 1 year however with regard to pipes which constitute a substantial percentage of the works the capacities of the contractors being limited a decision was taken that these will be procured centrally and this central procurement has been done strictly in accordance with the gfr and the delegation of powers which is there this press note that i am going to circulate will state it very clearly that there is an so 15 brought out in january 2020 i'll repeat january 2020 which delegates the administrative and financial powers to various authorities in the ut and that says that a chief engineer that is the major head of head of department is authorized to procure any quantum of stores how are looking at the huge quantity which is going to be procured a conscious decision was taken that additional checks were necessary and a ut level purchase committee was constituted this ut level purchase committee is headed by the senior most engineer in the ut that is development commission works it is under him that the ut level purchase committee meets it is that committee which has decided the standard bidding document it is that committee which approves the rates of rates of any kind of tenders which are to be allotted not just for the pipe material but also for tenders in respect of works and it is this committee this committee's recommendations which are then acted upon by the chief engineer who is a major hod i would like to clarify something important here jjm is a scheme it is not a work so when you look at the works then yes there is a contract committee which is going to be there that contract committee will be for an individual work but the moment you look at a scheme the scheme will have a number of works under it like i mentioned there are 3300 schemes here or 6600 components so while administrative approval has been granted for the entire scheme none of the schemes go to a level where the contract committee headed by the administrative secretary would come into picture i want to reassure everybody and inform everybody that every work which is being executed under jjm there is administrative approval which has been accorded the technical sanction has been accorded by the competent authorities and only after the a and ts has been accorded the tender document can be uploaded for the nit let me clarify that there are directions of the finance department since 2020 that without a and ts being clearly mentioned there's no question of the tender being called therefore the a ts is accorded every this aspect is done in advance now there's another check which comes the allotment once made any bill to be paid it is necessary 
that for the payment, you are all aware that these payments are not being done through the treasuries by everybody going there and trying to get some money out of the treasuries. No. It is all done through the electronic medium only. And the PACES system which is there, which is the system which allows the money to be paid to a contractor, that PACES system has clear columns asking for the A to be indicated, asking for the TS to be indicated. If the A and TS are not indicated, then the payment cannot be made. So let me again assure you that every payment which has been made, as I mentioned, 3,088 3, 3, crores which has been made, every bit of payment which has been made has been done only after A and TS has been uploaded there. So there is no question of any tendering being done without ATS. There is no question of any payment being made without A and TS. I would uh, like to also inform you that it is the due diligence of the, you must have seen the documents which have been there and uh, circulated. Those documents indicate that on 20th of July 2022, it was stated that about 11,600 crores was the total project cost, which was revised to about 14,300 crores. But let me tell you this thing, that is the engineers of the Jal Shakti department, right down from the JE level up to the chief engineer, and subsequently the various checks and balances mechanisms which have been put in place, that today the project cost is 13,000 crores only. Almost about 520 crores was saved by due diligence by carefully looking at the schemes. Similarly, I want to inform you that with regard to SDP pipes, there has been allegations that there is some kind of uh, money which has been there in SDP pipes of some 20 crores, whatever. Let me tell you some things. SDP pipes is something which is being used all across the country at various places. In particular, I would like to draw your attention to the advisories which have been issued to the entire country. And I'll read out. SDP pipes should be preferably used over GI pipes. The UT has to be consistently, has been consistently opposing the use of SDP pipes even in plain areas for which sound technical reasoning is not provided. These are observations which have been circulated across. It is imperative to use such cost-effective pipes that is currently used across many states in the country. So I'll clarify that SDP pipe is, the, is in use in various parts of the country. And when the question comes of weather-related issues of the UT, we are extremely careful about what we use. When it comes to cold areas, it is DI pipes which is being used. When it comes to areas which are very rocky and therefore it is very difficult to lay the pipes and it's not cold, the water freezing of water is unlikely, we use the SDP pipes. These are technical decisions being taken by technical people. And this is the reason the SDP pipes have been used. And I'm happy to inform you that it is usage of this kind of pipes which has led to a saving of 430 crores in the overall execution of the scheme in JNK, the SDP pipes. A very important part with regard to monitoring that I need to mention is that while there is technical monitoring, while there is also monitoring by district uh, project monitoring units, DPMUs, which have been set up from December onwards, December 22, not before that. We interviewed people, we posted them there. Posted them there. And most importantly, the JJM structure is so robust, it does not allow any kind of physical or financial progress to be recorded unless and until, or a payment to be made unless third party inspection takes place. The third party inspection is taking place both in Jammu and Kashmir provinces. Therefore, and in addition to that, because the villagers, the Pani Samitis knows that they own it, it is their ownership, they have been involved so intensively that every bit of work which is being executed, the Pani Samitis are fully aware about it and they are monitoring it. A number of virtual meetings are taken on a regular basis in addition to everything else I am saying where the JEs and AWEs go on the ground and exchange also with it. The virtual meetings are taken on a regular basis where interactions with the Pani Samitis take place. Therefore, monitoring is being done in a very robust fashion. I have already talked about the expenditure figures. In this current year, we have spent 1447 crores, and we have been able to lift two tranches already from Government of India. I would like to just mention one point. Before the JJM came into being, and there are financial details that I have, the order of expenditure was 200, 500 crores, so th that's all. 
this time we have an ambitious objective we are talking of about 10000 crore rupees worth of execution in the current year and i'm happy to inform you that almost 1700 contractors are working with us and the pipes are being procured for 20, from 24 original equipment manufacturers this figure i'll again repeat the figures 6600 a lot uh, contracts about 1700 contractors and procurements of all pipes etc through the oems only yes there have been retenderings indeed and only when the gfr so requires it in fact there is not even a single instance where any complaint was received with regard to allotments uh, if you look at the letter of 20th of july 2022 it makes a mention that the composite tendering and i would be circulating this letter also that the composite tendering which was done which is the basis for a lot of allegations we are flying thick and heavy the composite tendering that letter itself says has not given us any success in allotting works and in fact component wise tendering has led to the works getting better response it is that very letter again which talks about other difficulties i am happy to inform you that most of these difficulties have been taken care of if it's a matter of cadre management we have at that point of time in july 2022 one single engineer which is being often talked about that single chief engineer was holding three charges the officer was promoted in 2020 and it's not in 2022 in 2020 he was promoted he was posted as chief engineer that gentleman was given the charge of another chief engineer rtic and the phg charge let me clarify was given by the very same gentleman who was at that time holding jal shakti department to that very person so the third charge the three departments phg jammu irrigation jammu and rtic jammu were given to that but and this recommendation has been given by the very same person who is writing that entire detailed 20 the the ones which are the things which are coming out in the papers also a lot of talk is being made that one action was taken against one particular chief engineer who was placed under suspension while another one was spared let me clarify these recommendations also took place in july 2022 when the person who is writing all these things was heading the department nobody stopped him from doing whatever he wanted in fact again the recommendations for suspension and giving the charge to somebody is originated has been given by him precise to be precise on 27th of july 2022 therefore it is very easy to later turn back and say various things but this is the factual position as it is today i would also like to inform that a large number of rds etc have been settled precisely to bring in more discipline and a sense of responsibility amongst all the engineers uh lastly there is a talk about schemes other than uh, jjm nrwdp nrdwp nabard and jk idfc jk idfc is the languishing schemes yes estimation made at that time was the a large number of schemes were required to be shifted in july but again i would like to inform you that this estimation has drastically come down because we have ensured that the payment processes are swift the contractors do not need to go from one place to another it is the responsibility of the department to make those payments once somebody executes it is his right to ask for the payments and it is our duty to ensure that the payments take place in time and that is the reason why the there has been an expenditure of 210 crores under these schemes which i mentioned as something which were not going to yield any results also the likely amount which is to shift from uh, languishing schemes to uh, to jjm is much less there are there is no advisory from the acb with regard to any kind of allotment related issue all advisories are and this talk about poor quality of works also the recommendations which have come from the acb are that the works may be properly monitored not even a single specific recommendations from the acb